raise chickens because I like to know where my family's food is coming from. I want to be closer to the whole chain of life. a 125 watt infrared heat lamp bulb. Use a heavy duty insulated light socket that is rated for at least a 125 watt bulb. Then turn on the infrared lamp above the brooder and let it sit for 24 hours. Check the temperature. The ideal warmth for newly hatched chicks is 95 degrees. Lower or raise the lamp a few inches to bring the circle's starting temperature to 95 degrees. After the first week, reduce brooder temperature by 5 degrees every 7 days. For the first week, the ideal temperature is 95, the second week 90, the third 85, and so on. By the end of the fifth week, the chicks should be able to stay warm by huddling together if they are in a protected hen house. By a month old, the chicks should be well feathered or fledged out. At that age, young hens and roosters begin to look different. Roosters' combs start to become larger and their spurs begin to grow. Like human teenagers, they begin to eat more as they start a growth spurt toward maturity. They'll be flapping around in their pen and looking for ways to escape. They're now ready to explore a larger hen yard or hen house. The housing for uh, poultry really varies greatly. It doesn't take much space to raise a few birds. Typically for laying birds or utility birds, we consider about four square feet per bird is all it really takes. For bantams, it takes much less, so you could actually raise uh, bantams in about two square feet. Options for housing are as grand or modest as budget and creativity allow. From a humble backyard hutch to a hen house big enough for a large flock or even a converted dog run, there are lots of choices for housing chickens. If space is limited or you live in the city, a prefab hutch may be your best choice. This modern design is insulated and is easy to clean. But no matter what kind of coop you build, there are some housing basics that will help egg production, including a protected nest where hens can lay, and a place for the chickens to roost at night that will keep them warm and out of the weather. In fencing any run for chickens, it's a good idea to bury the first row of chicken wire a foot deep in the ground, so coyotes or other chicken eaters can't dig under it. Most serious chicken keepers put their flock in a run like this one, where the chickens can dig and scratch. But no matter where they live, chickens need plentiful fresh water and access to food all day long. Provide high quality feed that is at least 14 percent protein, along with table scraps like greens, lettuce, fruit trimmings, and grated carrots to add a little variety to commercial feed. Laying hens may need extra calcium as well, so add ground oyster shells to their diet. A flock that's getting what they need will eat both greens and mash, some hens eating each type of feed. So part of good chicken keeping is paying attention to what chickens want and what they're craving when they eat. The hens first order of business in their day is laying eggs. <laughs> And they're beautiful, they're delicious, they look very different from what you buy at the grocery stores. 
Then they'll do other things for comfort. They'll find shady spots in hot times of the day. They love their dust baths. You'll, you'll see them shooting dust up into the air and fluffing their feathers. And it gets the, the, the dust right next to their skin and helps to kill a lice and other vermin next to their skin. Just as my garden, to put the seed in the ground and finally eat the vegetable, I raise the chicken and we finally eat the chicken. And so I'm part of the whole cycle of the food chain and I, it, it gives me a sense of well-being. Okay. I could have chosen many other kinds of animals to devote my, my energies to. But chickens have a kind of energy that excites me and it, 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 it brings life to the farm and I, I enjoy that. For most of the day, I let them run free. I can tell it not only from the flavor of the meat and the quality of their eggs, but in just their, their sense of well-being. And these are very happy chickens. There's a sense of, of wholeness about growing your own food. And the chickens remind me every day that it's not just me in this world. It helps me stay attuned to those things that are important to me, like cycles of life and death, of happiness and sadness, just everything that makes a life rich. So it keeps me connected to things outside of myself. <laughs>